If you're a regular ForeFlight user, you may have seen the Moss Weather Guidance feature, which was added to the app a while back. ForeFlight has a number of sources of weather observations and forecasts, Moss being one of them. If we open an airport page and tap the Weather tab, we see tabs for the METAR, TAF, and MOS. MOS stands for Model Output Statistics. Both the TAF, Terminal Aerodrome Forecast, and the MOS provide forecast predictions for an area. What's the difference, and why have two of them? Any weather prediction is exactly that, a prediction. Models are used which factor in pressure, humidity, temperature, and wind, along with historical trends and other assumptions. The model can predict weather within a specific geographical area. Think of the continental U.S. being covered in a massive grid and a forecast applied to each individual section of it. A TAF is developed by a weather specialist at NOAA. They'll take these model-produced predictions or area forecasts and interject their own knowledge and create a forecast specific to a particular airport or terminal. So the TAF is tailor-made for a specific airport. There are over 600 airports which are served by a TAF but the forecast area is relatively small compared to an area forecast which covers a wider geographic region, including many airports not served by a TAF. If we're flying into Luray Airport in Virginia and we want to check an aviation forecast, we don't have a TAF available at that airport. ForeFlight gives us a TAF, but it's not for Luray. It's for the larger Delta Airport at Charlottesville, 32 miles to the south. The latest forecast there is calling for a few clouds at 5,000 feet and westerly winds. Let's look at the MOS for Luray though. This one is actually able to be specific to our airport. That's because this isn't a human generated forecast. It takes the raw meteorological data and applies some trend information and aviation specific data into an automatically generated report. Here are the major changes that the MOS is showing at broken ceiling at 4000 AGL. So the cloud coverage is predicted to be much greater at Luray than at Charlottesville. This may be important for planning. Even though the airport is VFR and the TAFs are showing VFR along the route of flight, we may need an IFR clearance to get through that broken layer. So having these hyper-local forecasts from the MOS can really pay off when flying into airports and valleys like Luray in the Shenandoah Valley. Weather patterns can be pretty different inside and outside valleys, even if locations are relatively close by. So what's the catch? Here are some important limitations of MOS forecasts. First and foremost, MOS is not an official weather forecast in the sense that it can't be used for IFR planning, neither in terms of whether an alternate airport is needed, nor if an airport meets alternate minimums, only a local TAF or area forecast can satisfy that. MOS can't generate multiple cloud layer forecasts, only the human generated TAFs do that. It won't show showers or fog in the vicinity or precipitation intensity like a TAF does. It won't forecast non-convective low-level wind shear and can't tell the difference between different types of precipitation. Given these limitations, it's appropriate to treat MOS as a secondary source of weather planning data. Like we showed with the TAF and MOS here at Luray, what otherwise might show up as a VFR flyable route given official sources may need to be flown IFR, taking into consideration the broken cloud layer predicted by the MOS.